Week nine, balancing action and description. A mistake newer writers often make is working as if action and description should be separate. In fact, the best tactic is always to have some balance of the two in any scene. To demonstrate, I'm going to write two scenes, one descriptive and one action. Then we will see how the flow changes when the two are combined. Description. Hannah was a tall redhead with bright green eyes and an easy smile. The only signs of her training as a mage were the many small burn scars that ran along her hands and arms, a telltale sign. Usually she hid these beneath long gloves, but today she expected trouble and needed to be ready. Action. Hannah cast fireball after fireball at the dragon. She ducked and fired a blast directly at its underbelly, then rolled along the ground to flank it. The dragon reared back and opened its jaws just as she twisted beyond its grasp. Combined, Hannah fired fireball after fireball at the dragon, adding new scars that already marred her hands. Her red hair flew behind her as she rolled on the floor in an attempt to flank it, twisting out of its way just as it opened its gaping jaws. Okay, so this isn't great prose, but great prose doesn't fit well into the tiny amount of space we have in these demonstrations. As you can see, the tactic of combining action and description has two advantages. It puts the descriptions into a natural context, which means it feels less to the reader like they're being told something and more like they are being shown something. It slows down the action just a bit, and if the action moves too quickly, the reader doesn't have time to parse one event before the next. Here, I've added brief descriptors to what is essentially an action scene. The same works in reverse. If you have a long descriptive scene, place action within it. You'll remember how the backgammon game in Daddy's Girl functioned. This week, you will be revising your short story with an eye toward balancing action and description. Pay attention to the direction to use track changes when you do this so that I and your peer reviewer can see the changes you've made. This is key to our being able to help you see where you are succeeding and where you might still need some practice. Remember, your ultimate goal is to make the reader feel as if they are inhabiting the world you, are, you have created, which means both making them feel as if they are in the thick of the action and making sure they can see that world and the characters in it. I'm excited by what you've already written. I can't wait to see your stories as they become more polished and ready for publication.